Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. In this episode we are looking at a Binatone 5 star that I bought from eBay. Let's see if we can repair it. And here's the listing. £48 it cost me with some shipping fees. And the seller has stated that somebody's been messing about with the microphone wiring and it has got a mid-band modification which we can see there that looks a little bit dubious so it says the mic socket has been wired very strangely no transmitter as well and it's got some mid block chip which we've seen there so let's see if we can get this old radio working and then in the second part we'll take out the mid band chip and fit it with something a little bit nicer but here's the radio straight out the packaging as you can see it looks well used the rear of the radio looks okay the case is a bit tatty still got its original sticker on the top most of the screws are there I'm sure it'll clean up to an okay condition So for a start, let's take off this microphone holder. Screw missing at the top. Let's take out some screws. Take out one of the bracket screws. And then let's go to the other side. At least the screws don't look like they've been tampered with too much. Strange bit of wire under this screw. But, okay. Seen worse. last screw done and first look inside everything looks kind of okay there's the usual mid band wiring modification mess that always seems to be there but yeah doesn't look too bad to be honest but it's not staying in anyway so but that's for another video so let's have a look on the component side and there we have it so we'll disconnect the main speaker Yeah, everything looks okay apart from all the all of the R pots all seem to be cranked one way so we'll have to have a look at that it's obviously been work around the microphone socket which I did say so that's fine all the rest of the wiring seems intact and of course that mid-band modification glaring out at the top of us and I can just see a LC7136 below that that ah, doesn't look too bad here's a close up of the mid band modification at least I've had the decency to put it on a piece of aero board and put the PLL in a socket soldering on top of the channel change looks a bit sketchy but it's tidyable and there's a better shot of the 7136 if you can see it 
But apart from that, everything seems intact. All the cores seem intact in the PA stage, which is good. It's kind of worrying that all the VRs are all cranked over one way, but I'm sure we can sort that out with the aid of the service manual. But apart from that, everything seems to be kind of okay. So let's try and get some life out of it. So I'll plug in my power supply. And comes on straight away. Which is good. I presume that's normal UK. Channel select seems to work okay. Nothing a good tidy up won't solve this. So let's try and work out the mystery of this microphone socket. So I'm just trying to short some together just to ascertain if we do have a receive. something gives us a bit of a crackle there so I think in I think the best way to do it instead of trying to work out which way this is wired I think the best way is to just start afresh with it but we are getting some noise So something is actually happening. So I think the best thing to do is start fresh. So what we'll do is we'll just pull all the wires off. We will then work out which wire does what. And then we'll place it, place them back on in the correct way according to the Cybernet wiring scheme. Don't know why you would want to change the wiring inside, but okay. Could have been worse. bit fiddly to get into these wires so there we have it all the four wires disconnected so let's see if we can work out which wires which but first let's give this microphone socket a clean up Remove this excess solder, put some fresh solder on it, make it look a little bit nicer than what it did. So we'll just add some fresh solder to it and then we'll use the desolder braid to remove the excess. Hopefully it'll look a little bit nicer when it's all done. What we'll do is we'll just refresh the solder after this. So we'll just get our solder iron into these awkward ones. Remove the last of the solder. And the one thing with a gas iron, it does vent 
gases in a certain way and if you're not careful whilst you're working on it your fingers can get a little bit warm so maybe one day I'll treat myself to a something that isn't as violent as the gas iron so let's refresh the solder Oh, it looks nice now let's try and figure out the wiring now looking at the wires this green wire goes off to the microphone gain so I think the green wire is the microphone signal the audio signal and here's the page from the Midnight Express Bandito 5 star is configuration number one so the microphone signal will be at the top followed by the earth at the bottom and then over to the side transmit and receive so let's see if we can wire it up to that way looking at the schematic diagram shows that pin one is indeed the microphone signal which goes off to the microphone gain and two is indeed ground which is fine and then three and four will be the transmit and receive so let's continue to check the wire which i think is ground and sure enough i get a short circuit between that wire and the rigs ground so i'm pretty sure that the black wire will be the earth or the e so now we've got those that two we need to work out which ones are the transmit and the receive but first let's connect up the wires that we know which ones they are So first off the earth or the ground and then above it goes the green wire I've actually taken off the ends of these cables stripped them back a little bit to make them a little bit neater okay so there's two wires connected so now we need to find out which is transmit and which is receive now i did try continuity checking one of the wires to the speaker which was shown in the circuit diagram but that didn't work very well But on, when we do a voltage check of the other wires, we've got 8.5 volts on one of the wires. And in the schematic diagram, that does show when that is pulled to ground, we get a transmit. And sure enough, the radio transmits with a healthy 6 watts into my dummy load. So that's one good thing. At least the RF transistor is not blown and we are transmitting. So maybe, I don't know why, the, uh, the guy said that it wasn't transmitting. Maybe it's just this weird configuration. But anyway, now we've found three of the wires, we can conclude that the remaining wire must be the receive circuit. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting in with a soldering iron. Trying not to burn all the rest of the cables that are in there. There it goes. So the grey wire must be received, and the brown wire 
must be transmit because when it was grounded we got a transmission so that should restore our microphone socket back to how it should be for the correct cybernet wiring so hopefully that's one problem out of the way tidy up of the wires and all looks good so let's try it with a microphone sure enough things are working good deflection on the S meter and we have the correct noises being emitted so I think that's solved our microphone issue Testing it against another radio. And we seem to have transmission. one strange thing was happening here we were getting a, a howling noise on the microphone only when the microphone was keyed in a certain way and we actually well I actually found out later that that was due to one of the capacitors on the back of the microphone socket needed to be moved across it was causing some weird oscillation but anyway, as you can see, power meters jumping up and down. Now this is actually the low power setting. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm altering our V3, which is the low power adjustment pot. And it seems that it's got a dead spot in it. And then we can see, oh sorry, it wasn't, I think it was RV3 or RV8 the one at the top anyway but it seems to have a dead spot a black spot in it so maybe that's why the guy said it wasn't transmitting maybe he had it in low power and maybe it just wasn't doing anything so what we'll do is we'll change change the, uh, the pot out A look on the schematic diagram shows that it's a 330 ohm I don't think I've got a 330 ohm but we've got something close on the two of the white uh, legs are connected anyway don't know what's wrong with the old one maybe it was dirty who knows but there it is it actually shows RV5 on the board So we'll take that away. I think I found a 220. We should be fine for this purpose. So let's solder that into place. looking good let's try it again so 
put the radio into low power mode, put my meter onto low power. Let's transmit and begin to turn the pot. And as you can see, this one now goes up very steadily and allows you to do the correct adjustment which for this radio should be 0.4 of a watt which I've set it to it's a close up of the meter just below half a watt on the bottom scale and no more jumping about when you're trying to adjust it so I think that is another problem fixed so we'll do a quick frequency check and it is a bit low but that is understandable due to the mid-band modification to get the best of both worlds you do have to put one slightly higher one slightly lower just to get it in the center it's hardly noticeable I think there is a way of correcting this by switching a capacitor so mid-band is actually okay 26.965 and we just saw 27.405 27.965 again all good so now we've got some of the main problems of the radio out of the way Let's see if we can make it look a little bit nicer cosmetically. One of the reasons was I wanted to get that off because I was not sure exactly what that is. I think it's some foam that has decayed over the years. But we'll take it all off. Take all the control knobs off trying to be as gentle as possible but some of them are really stuck on pretty tight and I've just noticed that the front decal is actually coming loose so we can attend to that this channel select it's been very awkward to get off but I managed to get it off just off camera so let's unscrew the front fascia comes everything looks okay underneath so we'll put that to one side and like I said the glue has given way underneath the front uh, front panel there so what we'll do is we'll use a little bit of B7000 Run some of that underneath it. And that should stick it down quite nicely. A little bit around the edge there, and we should all be done. So after I pressed it down, I did leave it for half an hour whilst I went and had something to eat. I put a weight on it. And then left it. So we come back after I've given it a clean with some foam cleaner, and it's looking better already. I think somebody super glued the top section on tried getting rid of that but it won't come off which is a shame because the bottom part has actually cleaned up quite nicely it looks a lot better than what it did now let's have a look at this what was under 
as you can see it's foam but it's just it used to be foam but it's not foam anymore it's just brittle and crumbling away actually thinking of somebody used something to pack out the inside of the button because it was broken but no it's just whatever it was it's not a, not that anymore so let's give all the knobs a nice clean up a bit of foam cleaner and a paintbrush amazing what a little bit of cleaning can do you can turn something that looks in a sorry state into something that's not too bad off and now we can reassemble it I've also given a signal meter a clean as well because that was a bit dirty unfortunately there's no way of getting rid of the scratches but the radio is probably getting on 40 years old so I think it's not too bad to be honest I've seen a lot worse so I'll refit all the control knobs back on to get them all lined up nicely and there we have it and apart from the super glue marks on the front which is a shame it actually polishes up quite well I'm actually quite impressed I know nobody sees the inside of it but see we're cleaning the radio we're going to clean it all now the bottom of the radio has got some adhesive marks on it there must have been feet or something that somebody's had on them and it's not shifting with foam cleaner so what we're going to have to do is use some isopropyl alcohol and a bit of hard work and we'll see if we can get these marks off even scraping with the plastic spudger doesn't really do much whatever that glue is it's now solid so some isopropyl alcohol on a cloth and we start to work it work it in and it is starting to go so I think with a little bit of perseverance five minutes with a cloth and alcohol is gone and there we have it after a little bit of work with the cloth and the alcohol sure enough 
it's all gone and looks a lot better so let's have a look at the top now the top has got an original sticker on it which I don't really want to remove because it adds character so we'll try and clean around it at least the top hasn't got holes in it so a little bit of foam cleaner working up to the edge of that original sticker It would be nice to respray these lids, but I don't think you need to. It would remove this original sticker, which maybe adds a little bit of character to the radio. I'm sure there's not many out there with the original stickers on. Unless somebody's got a new old stock one sat in a box somewhere. And there we have it. So, what's next for this radio? Well, in part two, we're going to remove the mid-band modification and we're going to install one of my own that I've been designing. But as far as this episode goes, Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment and we'll see you for part two of this radio restoration slash modification.